The windshield wiper forehand has become the norm in the modern game. But today, we're going to be taking a look at a variation, the reverse forehand. We see pro players with three typical finishes. We get players finishing around the shoulder. We get players finishing slightly below the shoulder. And we also have variations where players finish even around the lower torso. And then in some different cases, we have the reverse forehand. The difference with the reverse forehand is that the racket finish is actually on the other side of the body. The racket travels up on a much sharper angle and in the follow through, it reverses onto the opposite hitting side. How do top players use the reverse forehand? What are the benefits? And how can you apply it to your own game? Let's take a look. A lot of commentators still see the reverse finish as a technical flaw, although obviously it has become a big part of the modern game. If we look at Rafael Nadal, he hits more than half of his forehands with a reverse finish. So if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for us as well. And here's how we can do it. Looking at pros, we can see that they use the reverse finish in certain situations. And there are also a few variations to this motion, which we are going to learn about. The main difference between the reverse and the regular forehand is how rapidly the players bring up the hitting arm through contact points. On a regular forehand, the upper arm will reach an extension, which will make it go parallel to the court in the wrapping phase. And this doesn't happen until the end of the swing, but on the reverse forehand, this hitting arm structure is going to be achieved on the same hitting side, which indicates that instead of going around and across, we are basically just going straight up. You can see that players on the reverse finish will get into what I call the air the armpit position, where there's almost a 90 degree angle underneath the arm. And this happens on the same side that the racket starts instead of it happening, boom, later on when the racket wraps around the body. This is achieved by lifting the entire arm from the shoulder more rapidly. And the hitting arm structure at contact point will basically just remain the same until the hitting hand reaches eye level and then the player relaxes the finish. The tip of the racket will stay pointed to the side of the court for much longer. Whereas on the wiper finish, as soon as we go through the ball, we would start to cover it until the tip of the racket finishes on the opposite sideline. But by the end of the swing, when the hand reaches eye level on the reverse forehand, the tip of the racket is usually pointed up straight towards the sky before the relaxation. Now, even more strange is that we can also have a reverse forehand that starts with a wiper motion and completes the wiper and then goes in to the reverse. This is where the racket completes the wiper motion going from sideline pointing to sideline and then still comes back around for the reverse, arguably adding a dimension of extra topspin and racket head speed in certain situations, which we're now going to look at. Let's take a look at when pros use this in a game. Players will use the reverse forehand to fight off penetrating driven balls through the middle of the court. When the contact point is closer to their body and later than they expect. They can also do the same thing when they are stretched on the run and forced to hit the ball late. The reverse forehand is usually a more defensive measure that is meant to neutralize balls that come closer to the body and also ones that are lower to the ground and need a little bit more arc and spin to get up and over the net. Now, usually on the reverse forehand, it's not as much of an offensive shot. There's a lot less forward extension and the swing is usually abbreviated 
when time is not in abundance. But there are certain scenarios where some players have figured out how to turn this into a weapon. Players who generally have more extreme grips are able to use the reverse finish on high balls as well as regular rally balls. Two great examples would be the Pete Sampras running forehand where he usually used the reverse finish and was able to turn it into an amazing offensive shot. And then of course, we have the man himself, Rafael Nadal, who implements this to the highest degree and has definitely used it to weaponize his forehand. Now, I'm not saying that you need to do this on every single shot, but let's take a look at how this could apply to your own game as well. If you experiment with the reverse finish, you can create additional spin while still generating surprising pace as well. To try this yourself, visualize at contact, taking the racket rapidly up to eye level while keeping it on the right side or your same hitting side right if you're a left-handed player and going rapidly up and around. This should give you a basic feel for the motion and you can start experimenting in your own game in the situations that we talked about, right? Wide running balls, low balls, and also those fast balls that penetrate your hitting zone where you don't have as much time to set up and you're forced to make an abbreviated swing. It's also important to note that a lot of players only use this finish spontaneously and it is not the norm. And you can find people in the situations that we discussed using the normal wiper finish. So it's up to you to decide how much you want to implement this in your own game. In any event, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next clinic. A lot of people are trying to fix the symptoms and not the system for their shots. If you want an entire teaching system that is devoted to solving the problems that are impeding players' success, check out my online course. You can click the link in my bio for more information.